might be tested. The song says, Jesus, me.
never gets easy. And if it's not set, all right. If the atmosphere is not set, as difficult as preaching is, it becomes even more difficult. God has given an assignment for those with the call to preach to, to give a word that the people can can feed off of and be edified from. And that's a and, and, and from week to week, even before Bible study gets here, people are faced with humongous issues in their lives. And some people have taken their lives before the, the, the appointed time to get back to the place of grace or, or where the word is administered. And so it's a, it's, it's a very heavy burden to, to be able to put a word in someone that can help them through until the next time. And so it's a, it's a huge task that that I don't take lightly, and and it's so it's so difficult that I, I can't even eat before before I preach. And 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 my wife, she she everybody that knows me pretty well, they know that because because I, I take it serious the the opportunity to stand in front of God's people with a prepared word right. that will edify their lives and hopefully help them to look a little bit more like Christ. And so I thank you all for helping me find rest, amen, amen. and amen. Jesus as I attempt to, to share a word with God's people. The word comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 through 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 through 16. And I was sharing with... Um, with, with someone had the opportunity to go into a leadership workshop at a conference yesterday down in Coco and, um, and I was sharing with someone earlier in the week that it's, it's difficult when you have been tasked of a call to preach God's word and have been given a platform to preach the word it's difficult to actually have relationships with the people because there are times when you preach a word and folk think that you're talking about them. Not that God is talking about them, but they think that it's you talking about them. And, and, so, and so you have to try to sometimes just kind of stay away from the people uh, because not everybody is able to understand that, that, that when they come in the midst of God's word, whether it's a, a song or whether it's a Bible study or whether it's a a worship service and done. Sometimes it's even on TV that God will speak to them through those venues. And and but if they're not mature enough, they'll think that, well, that person found out something about me. And, and then but but the, the, the bad part about that is they won't give God the credit for taking the time to address their situation. And so a situation that could have been a blessed situation, um, it turns out to be a not, a not so blessed situation because they missed it all together. And so as I was sharing with that person, you know, I said, you know, I, there, there's a there's a fine line that I have to walk in making sure that I don't get too close um, to the people that God is, has um, given me the opportunity to lead because not everyone is able to take the words you preached and actually understand that it was God speaking to them. And, and so I don't want to rob people of that opportunity and, 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 um, and so I was sharing with them just how 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 much of a burden it is to give people that word that's necessary. But this word today, when I look at this word today, I was really working and trying to prepare a word, and um, and really thought it, I had exactly what I wanted, and I was dealing with Hosea and the and, and, and Gomer, and um, and and it was a it was a great word, and um, and. God said, not, not now. Can't do that with now because they're, 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 they're not everybody's going to be able to, to hear me from it. And, and I'll give you the right time. And so maybe this will be the word that he'll allow me to do something with maybe and we laugh us somewhere. But, but he took me to Second Chronicles. And so I'm hoping that as, as we listen today, that, that we, hopefully we're able to actually hear God and, and not think that somebody messaged the pastor on Facebook or not think that somebody 
sent the pastor a letter or, or not think that somebody has been leaking or snitching. It's God has a word for his people and those that are mature enough to handle the leak will be able to handle the meat. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 11 through 16. He said, Thus Solomon finished, God, you are remember Solomon, right? David, David's son. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make it, make in the house of the Lord and in his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. He says, if I shut up heaven, he says that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and if I do this, if I allow hardships to come, if my people who are called by my name allow all these bad things to happen. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I, if I allow all these bad things to happen, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place, yes, this, this temple that you just built, Solomon. For now I have a chosen and sanct now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. That's all the time. The title of today's sermon is A Sanctified Church. A Sanctified Church. You know, there's so many things that we miss out on life because somewhere in our experience, in our development, who we are, we can turn things that are actually positive and make them look negative. One thing that really bothers me, and I'm not really, it's been a while since I've been school age, but I remember when I was young, for kids that, that spoke well in my neighborhood, they would say that they talk proper. <laughs> and that sounded like a compliment, but it wasn't a compliment. It was, it was a, a negative thing. You talk proper. So as God was giving me this message, I, I went and looked up some synonyms for proper. Correct, right, appropriate, accurate. How is it that you cracking on me or picking at me or trying to make me feel bad or make other people laugh at me by saying, I talk accurate, I talk appropriate, I talk right. Because the opposite of proper is wrong, inaccurate, not appropriate. But it's sad because the culture that I grew up in, the children that I were around in the neighborhood that I grew up with, that was actually a put down that I talked And Judas, I want you to forgive us. But they even said, you talk white. <laughs> I talk white. I talk appropriate. 
I talk accurately. I talk correct. But y'all laughing and digging at me? You just gave me a compliment. If I, if I really know who I am, you just gave me a compliment. But then you put yourself down because you basically when you say I talk white, you almost implied that black is wrong, ignorant, inaccurate, not appropriate. You, you literally just put yourself down. But that was accepted. That was that was known. Anybody understood when oh he talked proper, you you put me down. Oh she she talked proper, she thinks she's a, she you 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 put that. And that was accepted, that was known. And so then you have Sarita, so can I pick at you for a second? You have little children like Ron and Sarita's baby. I remember she was in summer camp one summer. And we was at the Jacksonville Zoo. I didn't catch that at the zoo, but I was filming the whole thing. And so later when I was filming it, I was looking at the film, I saw Michael. And she's one of those ones that they might say talk proper. And I was listening to Michael as they were going over this little, little bridge. And I can't remember the word because it was about three or four years ago. But Michael was talking sounding hood. I can't remember the word, but I stopped the video and rewind, rewind. I, I see Michael mouth moving, but the the dialect, the sounds, the words that's coming out, this doesn't sound like Michael. And unfortunately, sometimes we that are getting it right are getting set up good to be successful in life, are doing it the right way, the appropriate way. Nobody stops you in school when you say, I, that I, I, I am not going, and say, don't say am not, say ain't. People don't stop you and say that. When you say it ain't, they tell you the right thing to say it. So, and so, when we are getting it right, sometimes there's so much pressure from folk that, and, and I refuse to call people ignorant, just are not as informed as they should be. Get so much pressure from folk that are not as informed as they should be, and then begin to act wrong, not right inappropriate. Even in church. Now we're kind of a, we're a traditional, we're not as high as like maybe an Episcopal church or something. I say high church. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? When I say high church, yes. in the form of worship, liturgy and all that kind of stuff. We're not as high as maybe an Episcopal or Presbyterian church, but but I guess among predominantly black denominations, we're probably considered a fairly high church. Unfortunately, y'all got a low pastor, but we got a, we, 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 we were considered a fairly high church. And, and then sometimes when we might look at things and say, something negative about a church that does it a different way as if that's the wrong way. Oh, that's what the sanctified church do. And so you in a church that's not sanctified? Because we have limited sanctification to the form of worship, like how you shout, if you speak in tongues, it, 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 we, we, the, the, the form and fact we, we limit the sanctification to, to things that really have nothing to do with sanctification but now we distance ourselves that's the sanctification but the, 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 the bad part about doing that all of the things that are right, proper appropriate, all of the th things that are really sanctified you now disassociate yourself with those things and that's a bad to go. 
Words are powerful. No matter how much I, I had a conversation, I had the teacher seminar two weeks ago at the Christian Education. Maybe I changed so many. Christian Education Youth Leadership Congress. Used to just be CC, but now, but all the leadership of the youth and and in in the in Florida and the Bahamas, I had to teach a session with the 17 and 18 year olds, and 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 we were talking about words that are in songs and. And as I was proving a point, I had to go and pull some songs and get some songs that I know that they listened to. And I was sharing with them. You know, it was hard to do this. I was like, because I had to do so much editing because so many of y'all songs are filled with words that I can't even play in this room. And and, and, and as we were talking, and, and one, of the, one of the young guys was like, you know, he was like, well, you know, we don't even listen to the words. The words are not really that important. I was like, but the words are probably more important than you think. The words say something to you. Now, words hadn't changed when, when, when I was coming up and, and I hear sexual healing. I think about sexual healing. When I hear between the sheets. Y'all don't know about them songs right there. But, 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 but when I hear those songs, that's the kind of stuff I got. I always think about Jesus. I think about the stuff that the song's saying, but 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 folk have confused. The words don't mean anything, and so when you saying to yourself that these W's ain't loyal, I guess they spell it with an H now. These H's ain't loyal, and, and and the words that they say in the song, you you might be saying that you don't you don't you don't the words don't mean anything, but you treating you treating the folk like what the song's saying. They ain't loyal. They don't matter. You you treat them. And I told the boy, and I had all boys. And I said, just imagine what, I said, that's your mama, and that's your sister. And so I took them through a little video, and everything it was showing, and the word that was saying about the, the mamas, I mean, about the women, I would tell I said, that's your mama right there. That's your, don't worry, don't worry about it, the word don't mean nothing. The boy started getting, angry. that's your mama right there. That's your, see that one bent over on that, on that car right there, that's your mama. You look at these videos and you did what you, in your mind, you start disrespecting women. You don't value women. You don't value their work. That's your mama bent over on that car. That's, that's, that's your sister right there getting used, or getting used by those guys. Brent, Brent, those are real women. Stop looking at it like you said. These are real women. These are real words. You're saying real things about you, about your people. Words are important. And we have to make sure we slow down in life. So that we don't actually turn from a good direction. Yes, sir. That we don't actually head in the wrong direction. Here, let's, let's look at the scripture. A sanctified church. In verses 11 through 12 it says, When Solomon finished the house of the Lord, you remember David wanted to build a house? But because he had blood on his hand, because he had built, built God was like, no, you can't build my church. You can't build a house for me, not the way I'm going, because you got blood on your hand. And, and I can't, I can't let you do it. You kill too many people. And he said, and he, and he said, when, when, when Solomon, but he said, your son, I'll let your son build it. It's like I'll let you buy the land, and your son can actually build a house on the land. He said, when Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the, the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, it says he prosperously affected. And he said, and and, and and so when he went to do the work, he was very successful in the work that he did when he went to, to build his house for God and, and then all the things that came along with it. He put a pastors there for the for the king. He, he put all of these fine things to, to show how what he thought of his God and and, and, and it says that and then he said that he, he he was extremely effective in what he tried to do. And it says and the Lord came to Solomon by night and said to him I have heard your prayer and I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. And so God came to him after he did all of this work. God came to Solomon by the night and he said, so, he said Solomon, he says, he says, I heard your prayers. I've I, I seen your work. I've seen what you did. I've heard your prayers. I know your heart. I know why you did it. I, I know why you built this house for God. Because God knows why we do things. 
Some of us do things for selfish reasons. Some, some of us do, do ministry for selfish reasons. Some of us do just whatever we do, we do it for selfish reasons. But God says, Solomon, I know why you did it. I heard your prayer. And he says, and so my choice is after you've done everything that you've done to, to build this temple, to, to, to build this house of worship, and you've done everything that you've done, even you built places for yourselves, a, a nice place for you to live. After all you've done, he says, I've chosen, after I looked at your work and I heard your prayers, he said, I've chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. He says, I, I, I look so highly on what you've done. He says, I'm going to allow this to be my temple, a place to where people can come and offer sacrifices to me. That, that was major right there. For, for him to go through all, everything that he's done and, and do all that he did to, 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 to build a house for God and, and, and all of the planning. And, and he had to make sure that he listened closely. And he said, for God to come in and say, I approve of it, I receive it, and now people can come in and offer sacrifices, sacrifices that will atone sins, forgive sins. He says, I accept what you've done. And I just imagine when we look at it, there are churches on every corner, churches all over the place. And and I just imagine you would want a church, a, a place to where, for where, where sacrifices can be made. That, that when the choir sings sacrifices of praise. That, that when the stewards give sacrifices of service. That WMS gives sacrifices of mission. That, that, that when people come to the altar and, and offer sacrifices, uh, you would hope that in the church, All right. that God has accepted the church. All right. And this place to where you're actually offering sacrifices has the power to receive sacrifices. What good would it be that, that if I was out there in the world and I was messed up and I was jacked up and, and then I saw a church and I came into the church to offer a sacrifice to God and it was a place that God didn't even approve of. God didn't even respect sacrifices that were brought in that church. <laughs> and I came and, and I expected it to be able to serve a purpose, but it couldn't serve the purpose. Because God didn't approve of the way it was built, the way it was designed, the way that, that the way that it was formed. God didn't approve of, of the things that were in it, the, the way it functioned, and, and, and folk expected it to be a place of sacrifice. But it could, but but this was huge. After Solomon built the temple, God said, I heard your prayers, I see your work, and I approve and I've chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Even beyond the temple, the church. God says, don't you know that your bodies are the temple of God? That literally we are the church. This is the church, but our bodies, we are the temple of God. And, and, and just imagine the, the sacrifices that are brought forth even, even within our own bodies, the, the prayers that we send forth. And, 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 and for us to be able to, to that, because God told, told us that now you are the royal priesthood. You don't need to give your offering to a priest and that, and, that, and that priest go and make an offering for you. He said, now you are the royal priesthood through the blood of Jesus and you can come to God for yourself. But just imagine with all those rights, all those abilities to, to be able to approach God ourselves, but, but when God looks at the temple that we offer, then he says, no, I don't approve of it. I don't approve of that temple. I, I don't accept sacrifices and offerings from that temple. It, I heard the prayers. The prayers were selfish. I, I saw the intent of the heart, and I don't approve of it as a place of, of uh, a house of sacrifice for me on the level of the church and on the individual level. God spoke to Solomon in it. After he had successfully completed construction of the temple and informed Solomon that, the, that he had heard Solomon's prayer, that he had chosen the temple for himself, one house of sacrifice. God may give us direction to, to take on a task, but the manner in which we accomplish the task will determine whether God will own the work we've done. He might tell us to go and do something, but how we do it will determine if he'll own it after it's done. He told Solomon to build a, build a temple. But Solomon had to do it the right way. Amen. Solomon had to do it a certain way. Solomon had to be in constant communication with God for him to, after he's completed, but now for God to own. Does God own what you, what you built? Does God own this ministry? 
Does God own what you built in your individual temple? The, 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 does he look at what you've done? Does, does he own that? And say, That's a place of sacrifice. That's a place to where I don't trust anybody to come to you and, and, and receive ministry. And, and, and I believe that you can be affected. I own that. That's my child. That's my son. That's my daughter. That's my church. Does, does, does God, he, he gives instructions. But how are we perform the instructions, how we adhere to the directions will determine whether or not he actually owns what we've done. Mm -hmm. The church has a purpose. And in verses 13 through 15, God declares that if something adverse happens in our world, the church should be able to reverse the adverse thing and make it work to good. It says the church can do that. The church sitting back waiting on God and God sitting back waiting on the church. When adverse things happen in our life, we sitting back waiting on God and God, I gave you the power. I gave you the authority to make it happen. You waiting on me, I'm waiting on you. And, 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 he said literally that when something adverse, look at verse 13, he said, God says, check this out. If I shut up heaven and there be no rain, I'm talking about a drought. Or if I command that the locusts divide the land, all your crops, stock market collapse, the real estate, the economy collapse, lost jobs. He said, he said if, 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 if I shut up heaven and there be, if I command that the locusts divide the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Y'all see how crazy things are in Chicago right now? That's pestilence right there. Folk in Atlanta are tripping because somebody's coming, I think it was the Ebola, I think that's how you pronounce it. If I, if, if I send it, if I, if, if I send destruction, if, 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 if I send pestilence among you, and the funny part is that some of us are in the midst of pestilence right now. But it's become so norm to us. Man, I look at some places, you see, you, you see um leeches, leeches, leeches. What they do is is they they go and they, they just they, they attach to something. Sometimes you don't even know that that they, they, they suck the blood. I remember when I used to have dogs when I was little, we used to have to have to have to rub rub them like that right there to make sure they didn't have because they didn't have a tick. They have ticks attached to them and the tick just sucking and sucking and, and they get in a place to where the dog can't scratch it off and just sucking blood and suck. You know what sometimes in life in our communities there are some leeches, there are some ticks, there's some things that just take advantage of us. But because they've been doing it for so long, we don't even realize it's a pestilence now. Look and see what stores go to certain neighborhoods. Look and see when you have places, what, what neighborhood they go to when they when they give you some money, they got these places where they give you money and, and charge you 40 and 50% interest. Look and see where those places are. Look and see where, where the places are where they, all they all they push is, is alcohol and cigarettes and all they push is stuff that, that's not helping build up the community. Mom, milk, that, that's all they look at. That ain't half the neighborhood. We see it and we think it's normal. You don't see that kind of stuff in every, every neighborhood where folk are bringing stuff. Folk don't just, the, 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 the store down here that they got in trouble with, and the folk don't take a whole pack of cigarettes. And then start selling you singles out. Folk don't do that in normal neighborhoods. Folk don't have all the fraud, in, but what happens? The leeches and the ticks, they, they go and they try to take advantage of folk. And if you don't have somebody to start spotting that stuff, but not only spot it, to call it out, call a spade a spade. You don't love us, you don't care for us. I remember I had a guy, I had a guy that, um, I had a guy, he owned one of the little, little, little stores over on, on West Augustine. And, and he wanted some help trying to buy this one when when this one got shut down over there. And he 
came, you know, he came to me because he knew that, you know, I, I, I fight against racism or whatever. And he was like, they, they've been racist against me. They've been racist against me. And, and, and they don't want me to do that because of my name. And they've been racist because of me. And, and he came and he wanted me to fight. And I said, I asked him, I said, bro, I said, what, um, so tell me, what, 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 what are you doing that would make me think that, that, that you would be a blessing to my community? Tell me what you're doing where you are. No, 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 what you don't understand is, 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 is I give churches money all the time. <laughs> give churches money all the time. I have a sheet and I have a list and, and pastors come and they ask me for money. And, and I can show you 10 churches right now that I give money all the time. That made me understand why I can't get pastors to help me with stuff because they're selling out. And so now I'm trying to fight crime in your store. And I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get stuff so your store can't keep being an eyesore and bringing so much crime to my neighborhood, and I can't get past the stay with because they're on your payroll. Yeah. I said, bro, I don't have nothing issue, but you're gonna have to fight this on your own because I really don't see the positive that you're bringing to my neighborhood. I said, I think you have the money to bring something better. I think you have the money to bring better food. I think you have the money to bring better services. I said, but I think you take advantage because it's accepted. Yeah. And so I can't support you. Yeah. Next thing I heard, boy, that devil was blasting my name out there in the streets. <laughs> blasting my name. He blasts all he wants, but he can't touch God's what God's anointing. Church has purpose. Yes, when things go south, First, we got to recognize that this ain't right. Yeah. It's not supposed to be this way. Right. Our little baby's not supposed to keep being, having a struggle like they're struggling. Amen. The things that the issues that come up with, you know, we're, we're quick to jump on the issue over in old cattle. And some of y'all might agree with it, I don't, but everybody got their own opinion. Right. Over in old cattle, they made it illegal to wear saggy pants. Amen. Amen. I don't like the saggy pants, but I don't need to put another felony or misdemeanor Amen. on this little boy that's going to have a problem finding a job anyway. Amen. I don't need to make it harder for that. We got to figure out a different way to do it. Because when I, when, I, when, I, when, I when I make it, when I, when I, when I make it, just like when you're dealing with crack and, and cocaine. Now, cocaine is pure. It's, it's more pure than crack, so that should carry the harshest sentence. But when you look at who's being sent, the one that's, that's, that's selling, get caught selling the pure cocaine, and then the one that gets caught selling the, the crack, they have took some pure cocaine and diluted it so much and put chemicals in, they get more years than the one that sells the pure stuff. Why? Because the ones that diluted and break it down and turn it into crack, they look a certain way. And so now you got all these look y'all sometimes I just go over and just type in St. John's County on the DOC, Department of Correction, type in St. John County. Woo, we serving a lot of years. I go and look at the years that folk are serving. We serve, and I'm not saying I don't I don't condone crime. But Jesus, we serving a lot of years. Folk in 40 years. Folk getting 30 years like it ain't nothing. I think I have a spoken for judge told me I was getting one year. And judge is looking at folk and saying, you got 40 years that you got to be locked up in a cage like an animal, and then we expect you to come out and be productive. How? Huh? If I've been an animal for 40 years, I'm going to come out and bite somebody. And so why am I going to support something that, 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 that we have folks go and learn how to be like animals. And so even though I don't like the kids doing that, I can't agree with giving them, making them criminals because they wear wearing saggy pants. I see some other stuff out there I don't like. They ain't making, making that crime. And so the church, when we see adverse things happen and those kind of things, whether we agree to it or not, those are pestilence. When our people are serving so much time and, and they're not getting the same type of sentences as, as people that's doing the same kind of crimes, even worse crimes, that's a pestilence. That's stuff that's killing us. 
when our young girls are encouraged to not have that daddy in their life? If I know he's around, your money gonna get cut. I don't have a problem with helping somebody get on their feet. I don't have a problem don't make them don't make them lazy and I depend on forever. But to help somebody get on their feet and get something, look at my marquee. I love the marquee so much. And y'all would be surprised because when I first came here, boy, me and Marquis went in like bulldogs. <laughs> Am I lying, Marquis? I ain't lying. <laughs> but that's why you gotta keep loving. I mean, I'm so proud of Marquis. Take care of her children. Have her children in church. Work hard. Marquis called me two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And you better start crying because you're going to make me cry. Marquis called me two weeks ago and said, Pastor, I was, doing, I was doing so great things, we're going so good, and, 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 and I lost my job. I said, no, baby, we're going to find something to worry about that. We're going to find something. I started putting out faith. I need somebody, I need somebody that, that know about job because people start responding. But not only did she wait for my responses, she also got out there and kept working, kept looking for job, kept looking for job. Man, Marquita sent me a message a week later last week. I got me a job. God is able. God is able. I don't have a problem with helping folk out and helping them get on their feet, but we got a system out there that will take folk and, and, and get them dependent and, and get them happy being down here. And then say, and if you make that family fool and try to let that daddy be in the lab, we're going to cut your money. That's a pestilence right there. Who are trying to keep families separate? Who are trying to make sure that children don't have both parents involved in their life? That's a pestilence. But the Bible says, God says, if I shut up heaven, there's a drop, no job, no rain, no nothing. If I shut up heaven, and there'll be no rain. If I command the locusts, if I wouldn't cause you to lose your job just to see it, if I command the locusts to come and devour the land, he says, if I send a pestilence among the land, if I send oppression all among you, if I allow slavery to happen, if I send a pestilence among you, he said, it should not matter because the church that I've looked at and I've approved of, I've owned for myself, I said, that's my church. He said, because if my people who are called upon my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked way. He said, I hear from you heal the land. Yeah, that's, it, that's, that's, it. that's the kind of power that the church has. Yeah. A church that's going to prove. Uh, a church that's going to prove and say, God says I own that. Uh -huh. I'm sorry to inform you, but we got a lot of buildings with stained glass. Uh, we got a lot of places with altars and, and communion tables. Uh, we have a lot of places uh, that has the name church on the, on the building, uh, but God has not approved. Uh, they see people suffering with oppression. Uh, they see people suffering uh, with all type of pestilence in their lives. Uh, can't vote. Uh, the justice system treating them bad. Uh, and all they do uh, is go to church on Sunday morning, speaking in tongues and running around, uh, ain't trying to help nobody out. Uh, mothers are hungry. Children need parents. Uh, our elderly folk are suffering, uh, eating cat food, uh, and they jump around shouting, shouting, talking about what Jesus going to do. God says, you talking about what I'm going to do. I said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves in prayer, seek my face, 
I'm saying is, that don't look like God to me. So, you ain't gonna rent the church bus, you the church bus, to go gambling at a casino. Amen. You can do what you wanna do, but y'all, they will not see St. Paul LE Church. They see, he says, you got to turn. Folk looking at us. Folk looking at me, church, one more. So I'm just going to go ahead and preach now. Y'all just go ahead and be here for a couple seconds, but we still got the communion. Y'all be careful with all that party y'all doing the L stars now. They look at it and he says, he said, if you really want to have the kind of power, if you turn from your wicked way, I ain't telling you I was perfect. I ain't telling you I had a lot of mistakes and a lot of trials in my life, but I have to make a decision to turn from it. I just asked me this week, but well, Reverend Ross, how, you, how did you turn from the stuff that you was involved in? I told the sister, I'm telling you, you know when I got real serious about my salvation? When I sinned and lost my anointing. I was an anointed teacher at an early age in, in Christianity. I could pull stuff from scripture that folk that had been saved for, for years couldn't pull from the scripture in the Bible study. Folk used to invite me and ask me to come and teach their Bible study. And I slept and I fornicated with a girl and lost my anointing. I couldn't get nothing out no more out of the scripture than a little child could get out of the scripture. God, God, God made me suffer for six months without my anointing. And I looked at God and I told God, I said, God, if you give it back, if you give my anointing by God, I say, God, I'll never take you that life here again. I'll never compromise my relationship with you again. I'll never, I'll never compromise, compromise my, 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 my love for you again, God. He took that anointing and made me serious about it. And what am I saying to you? I know we have struggles. I know we have issues in our lives. And I know you fall sometimes. But what I'm telling you is that don't lay down in your mess. You love to hear when it's coming to your head. Trust in God. Three, two days later, on Tuesday, I told to the sister, sister. 
disease. Are we reversing pestilence? For the last verse, in verse 16, the scripture says, For we not, for now I have chosen and I sanctified this house. He said, St. Paul, if you're willing to live right, he said, if you're willing to do right, if you're willing to seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. He said, I'll sanctify this house. He said, Reverend Rose, if you're willing to live right and be an example and a mark to others, he said, I'll sanctify this house. God says, for now, I have chosen and I'll sanctify this house. Somebody say, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 